Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. We're brought to you by abetterrootplanner.com. Use our link in the show notes below to get a 30-day free trial to the premium app. We're brought to you by bigbattery.com. No matter what you need to power, Big Battery can provide you with the latest battery tech at the best price per kilowatt hour guaranteed. Their batteries are easily installed, require zero maintenance, and they're made right here in the U.S. Pick up yours today at bigbattery.com and use code now you know for 5% off at checkout. Um, what are you doing? I'm uh, sprucing up my resume. I'm sorry, there's so many problems with this. First, uh, why are you using a typewriter? But wait, a resume for what? After seeing AI Day, I want to apply to work at Tesla and build Tesla bots. But you're a philosophy major. What do you know about robots? Well, I've read Isaac Asimov's I, Robot. Ooh, I should put that in here. Uh, but Tesla's looking for people who have a background in science. Uh, yeah, right here, see? I have a background in science. What? Yeah, I've been taking Brilliant's course on neural networks. All right, we're sponsored by Brilliant, where you can go to learn about all sorts of fun science and math topics. Yeah, I just finished the Shape Recognizing Network course on Brilliant, so I'll be able to give Andre and the gang plenty to think about. Yeah, these are exactly the foundations that you need to start working on AI. Like, look at this section on sigmoid neurons. Right? Brilliant's courses make learning stick in your brain because all of Brilliant's courses have storytelling and use interactive problems and hints. But maybe you should do your resume on, you know, Microsoft Word. Oh, I'm word proficient. See, it says it right here. <laughs> uh, word isn't spelled with an E. Oh. To support our channel and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash now you know and sign up for free. And also the first 200 people that go to the link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Uh, can you pass me the whiteout? It's 2021. Get a computer. Range. Range, you wanna you wanna go on? You wanna give me some more? Range. It's one of those things that we as EV drivers have to think about sometimes, let's be honest. True. I mean, someday we'll look back and be like, wow, early EVs only had 150 or 250 miles of range. Now we've got these amazing energy dense batteries that charge up in a couple minutes. But for right now, even if you drive a long range Tesla, occasionally battery range becomes an issue. And if you've been an EV driver for a while, you've probably been in this situation. Oh dear, I've got to make it to the next charger. That's 30 miles away and my car is telling me I've got exactly 30 miles of charge. This is going to be a close one. Yeah, so what do you do? Well, that's what we're here to help you with today. Three EV range hacks to help you stretch those electrons a few extra kilometers or a few extra miles. Now, don't worry, we're not gonna make you watch to the end of the video to get them. But before we do, let me just say, everyone watching probably knows all three. What we did on today's episode is test them so we can tell you how effective they are. And we tested them not just in a Tesla, as you would expect on this channel, but also in the new VW ID4. That way, we can see how effective these range hacks are across different EVs. Okay, so the three range hacks are, number one, proper tire pressure. Number two, what we'll call a non-aggressive driving style. And number three, a slower top speed. Now, I hear you. You're like, these damn YouTubers with their clickbait titles. I thought I was getting some new rain checks I'd never heard of before. Driving slower, tire pressure, I already knew that. Yes, I mean, like we said, we all know that having proper tire pressure, driving less aggressively and lowering your top speed makes a difference. But how much of a difference? I mean, I've done it before, you've done it before, but was it worth doing? How much range did it really save? Well, we tested it for you and we have the answers. So let's get to it. All right, so here's what we did. We drove two cars, the Tesla Model 3 mid-range and the VW ID4 Pro. Both, we drove 44 miles for each test. We drove them at the same time. Zach was driving the ID4, I was driving my Model 3. First, we drove them the way many of us drive. Tires underinflated by about 10 PSI, because let's be honest, when's the last time you checked your tire pressure? And also, if you ever get your tires changed, the tire place just fills, eh, put it at 35 PSI, I don't know. Nice. They don't look, they don't check, and if you don't check, you're probably underinflated. Right. So for this first test, we drove aggressively, we were passing people, we were accelerating hard at green lights, like when you drive when you're in a rush. 
And we drove fast. On the highway, this meant driving at 75 miles an hour whenever possible. So about two-thirds of the trip was highway and about a third was back roads. And here were the results. The average speed was 49 miles an hour for the 44 mile test, and the trip took 55 minutes. Now, before we get to the energy usage, I'd like to pause for a second to note that we all have different ways to look at these numbers. Yeah, like here in the US, we would typically say, I get 23 miles per gallon. And in Europe, you might say, I get eight liters per 100 kilometers. And I know, I know they're both different sounding, even though they are both telling you the exact same thing. How much fuel did you consume for the distance traveled? So to keep this video simple, and since it doesn't really matter which way we say it, we're gonna use watt hours per mile. Again, it's just saying how much energy do we use to go a mile? That way we can compare apples to apples and tell you really what you wanna know. How much more efficient is it to drive using these three range hacks? Okay, so back to the numbers. So that first trip where we drove quickly, fast, and on underinflated tires, I used 357 watt hours per mile in the VW. And I used 259 watt hours per mile in the Model 3. And this makes sense. The Model 3 is a way more efficient car than the ID4. The EPA proved that and our testing bears this out. Yeah, the Model 3 is 26.8% more efficient than the ID4. All right, but here's the data you've been waiting for. What were the results driving with well-inflated tires, driving less aggressively, in fact, I'd say chill, and driving at 55 miles an hour on the highway? So we did the same 44 mile trip. It now took 68 minutes. That's 13 minutes longer because we were driving slower and we averaged 39 miles per hour. The VW ID4 that I was driving now used 250 watt hours per mile. And the Model 3 used 187 watt hours per mile. Wow, so it really does make a difference to use these three range hacks. It really does. Let's look at this as a percentage so you can apply these results to your own driving. Yeah, the next time you're like, oh crap, I might not make it the last leg to grandma's house. You'll want the percentage difference so you can make use of these results. So what's the percentage difference between driving quick, fast, and on low pressure tires and driving chill on well inflated tires? In the VW ID4, you will be able to drive 30% further if you use these three hacks. And in the Model 3, you'll be able to drive about 28% further if you use these three hacks. Whoa, I kind of thought we'd get results of like a 10% difference. No, this is a serious range difference, and it tracked very close across two very different cars. And I think these results are super useful for all EVs. So I just want to show you how you can use these results to help you, because you might be like 28% for Tesla, 30% for VW. What do I do with these numbers? Yeah, let's brush up on a little algebra. Let's say that you're driving a Tesla, so use the 28% number, and your navigation says that you have 125 miles to go, or it could be kilometers. The unit doesn't matter because we're using percentages. Okay, so I have uh, 125 miles to go. Now what? Now you have to look at your estimated battery range indicator on your car, and it says that you have 85 miles left in the battery. Okay. Can you get to your destination if you drive using our three hacks? Okay, so I take 125 and I multiply it by 28% and I get 35 miles. How does this help me? You subtract the 35, which you can think of as the extra miles you'd get by using our driving hacks with well-inflated tires and driving chill from the distance you need to travel, 125 miles, and you get... All right, let's see, 125 minus 35 equals 95 miles. So you're gonna need 95 miles of battery, but your battery only has 85 miles of range left, so... Oh, so the hack won't be enough in this case. I'll still come up 10 miles short. Right, some quick, pretty easy math will help you from getting into trouble. And it might help you get out of trouble if you do the math and realize that our hacks could save you enough range to make it to your destination. Exactly. Now, I wanna point out that we chose our three hacks because they seemed very realistic to what all of us might do. Right, in our fast model, we didn't drive 100 miles an hour on the highway. We drove a moderately fast speed of 75 miles an hour. Now, for many of you, we see you in Germany and Texas, this is still a bit slow. And when we drove our chill run, we drove 55 miles an hour. Yeah, you can get even more range if you drive slower, but we thought most of us would feel uncomfortable going much slower than this. Yeah, I mean, 55 already felt really slow. Yeah, we were getting passed by a lot of people. So as we wrap up here, I also want to point out that our data shows that the VW ID4 driving chill and with well-inflated tires uses the same energy consumption as the Model 3 driving on underinflated tires driving aggressively and fast. Yeah, Volkswagen Chill was 250 watt hours per mile and the Model 3 Aggressive was 259 watt hours per mile, about the same energy consumption. That's kind of crazy. It is crazy. 
Well, I hope this test and this episode was helpful for you. It's been helpful for me. I mean, I knew that it made a difference to drive slower, etc., but I didn't know how much. Knowing that it's 28% in my Model 3 really helps me make better decisions about whether I should slow down to conserve energy. So let us know in the comments if you find this useful. Also, please hit the like button. Jesse and I spent almost an entire day doing this test. Yeah, deciding on the route, getting the tire pressure right, driving, filming, recording data. Hitting the like button will help share this video with more EV drivers. Thank you so much for watching. Now, now you know. know.